Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out this day in baseball, and enjoy the game. Philadelphia, a perfect night for baseball as the New York Mets take on the Philadelphia Phillies for the first time here at Johnny Mac Stadium. And now the Phillies going out of the field. And we'll have a rundown of the lineup for you as the umpires now have broken away from home plate. Manager Casey Stengel talking to Jack O'Connor going towards the dugout. And Gene Mox, the manager of the Philadelphia Phillies, already in the dugout. For the Philadelphia Phillies, they will lead off with Tony Taylor playing at second base. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Game with a 
292 average. So he has now eight hits and 25 times at bat. And in the batter's box now, Felix Mantia, batting 327. Seven hits and 52 times at bat. Ball and pitch outside, ball one. already in the bullpen for the Phillies, Dallas Green. Jim Owens has been bothered with a sore arm, so manager Gene Mock getting the pitcher up right off. One base hit already. A bouncing ball that goes through in the left field, through the hall. Rounding at second base, Jim Hickman. The ball is juggled by Covington, but Hickman holds at second. And now the Mets with two straight hits have runners at first and second base, and the batter coming on now, Charlie Neal. Back in the service as of Monday. 
This series against the New York Mets will be his last until possibly July. He asked for an extension of leave, but did not get it. Now the one-one pitch to Thomas. Low, ball two. Two balls and one strike. They've moved the shortstop in the hole. And the third baseman, Don Demeter, guarding right against the line, deep at third. Outfield not shifted quite as much, but still shifted to the left. Stage of place and deep to left field. This will be coming to back. It might go all the way. And there it goes. Home run. Home run into the second deck as Frank Dallas puts the New York Mets out of front by a score of 3 to nothing, And that's home run number eight. It ties Frank Dallas for the next. Oh, yeah. 
a cool, refreshing glass of Rheingold right now, right now along with the game. Well, we're moving to the bottom half of the first inning in the New York Mets with a three-run lead going out to their defensive positions and coming up as the leadoff man for the Philadelphia Phillies. Tony Taylor, the second baseman. Taylor batting 229, has 16 hits and 70 times up. He's a right-handed batter, likes to bunch. On the mound for the Mets, Roger Craig. His record, one win and three losses. This will be his sixth game so far this year, and his first pitch is outside a ball. Roger has started four games prior to this game, and he has appeared in one game in relief. Strike one call, one ball and one strike. He has pitched a total of 15 and one third innings, giving up 26 hits, runs all earned. He's walked five and struck out seven. A record of one win and three losses. The one-one pitch. Just outside. Ball two. One ball and two strikes. Defensively for the Mets in the infield. Hodges at first. The second base, Charlie Neal. The shortstop, Felix Mantia. And the third base, John Zimmer. Catching Sammy Taylor. In the outfield, Frank Thomas in left. Jim Hickman in center field. And Gus Bell in right. The 2 1 pitch, low, ball three. Three balls and one strike on Tony Taylor. Now the 3 1 pitch to Taylor. Call strike two, and Taylor takes it. And the count goes full. The on deck batter, Ted Savage, with the Mets holding the 3 0 lead. Craig with the full gun pitch. Outside ball four. So Tony Taylor leading off for the Phillies draws the walk. That brings up Ted Savage. Savage, a right-handed batter, is being pressed in the service due to the fact that their top man, Tony Gonzalez, is out with a bad back. Savage, a fine young rookie, has no rookie, has no home runs and three runs batted in batting 172. valuable player in the International League last year. Played only two years of professional ball. First pitch to him by Craig is low, ball one. Gene Mock, the third base coach, he's one of the few managers coaching from the line. Giving a sign to the batter. Next pitch to Savage, down just too low, ball two. Time called as Savage asked the umpire, the home plate umpire, Chris Pelacrutus, to look at the ball. He does and keeps it in the game, and Gil Hodges now comes in the top to Roger Craig in the mound. The dimension is down the left field line, 334 feet. In center field, it's a big center field, 447 feet away. Right field, 329, but a high fence extending all the way around from the right field foul pole to the deep center field area. It's a big belt to right field for anyone for the home run. Left field a little easier. A lot of nostalgia in this ballpark. Many home runs pointed out, hit by famous people. Now set to go, and the 2-0 pitch is outside ball three. So Roger Craig, working with a three-run lead, walks his first man, now falls behind. Three balls and no strikes. Sherman Jones up in the New York Met bullpen. On the first inning of this ball game, action in both bullpens. 3-0 pitch. Call to strike. Roger Craig now. Three balls and one strike to Ted Savage. Craig, three and one, and the ball is hit. Yeah. 
as the Savage was hitting away, and he hit it deep to center field. Craig outside again, ball two. Two balls and no strike. And now Casey Singles coming out of the dugout. It's Dr. Roger in the mound. Craig in the first inning to the Philadelphia Phillies walked Tony Taylor in the 3 2 count. Well behind 3 and 1 on Savage. And now to his third man, he is 2 and 0. Roger, ordinarily a good control pitcher, having trouble with his control. New York Mets arrived in town without their catching gear. The catcher for the Mets, Sammy Taylor, wearing the Philadelphia Philly gear. He's got a bright red chest protector on and shin guard. A little in Congress for the colors of the Mets to you. So we're set to go with a 2-0 count to Johnny Callison. And the pitch is lying. strike. 
strike. No one out. Jones in relief for Roger Craig, looking for the sign, shakes the first one off. Gets set on the mound, goes into the stretch, then backs off and takes a look at the runner at first base. Hodges playing behind him, about five steps. Now Jones to the plate, it bounces by the catch. Second base. Now comes 
at the plate of the 3-1 pitch. It's in out to right field, deep to right field. Bell going back near the wall. Is there a jump high and makes the grab? Now coming back into second base on a quick play, Dalrymple the catcher. Fine catch by Gus Bell as he went high in the air, right against the wall in right field to hold it down. And now two men are out of Ruben Amaro comes in. Talking to Sherman Jones, the catcher, Sammy Taylor. Ruben Amaro, right-handed batter in the batter's box. He's hitting 286. Amaro with no home runs and five runs batted in on the air as 18 hits and 63 times at bat. Jones to him with his first pitch, a curveball, swung on a miss, strike one. Four to three game in favor of Philadelphia after the New York Mets jumped out to a three-run lead in the top of the first. Phillies have bounced right back and picked up four. Well, in the previous series between these two teams, a lot of runs scored, and it looks as though we're going to have the same formula right here tonight. Three. 
three balls and one strike. So Sammy Taylor is a leadoff man for the Mets here in the top of the second. Out in front, three and one. It'll be Taylor, Don Zimmer, and the pitcher's position in the batting order here in the inning. The next pitch by Jim Owens, high, and he walked him. So Sammy Taylor picked up the first walk of the game by a New York Mets. And it brings up John Zimmer. Bullpen, so possibly Sherman Jones will hit for himself. Now they're getting up. Ken McKenzie once again getting up. He was throwing before. First pitch to Zimmer. Hit on the ground hard at the shortstop. Amaro, the plate is second in time. The throw to first base is dirt. But dug out by Frank Doria. Double play. Well, on the hit and run play, Don Zimmer, who's having his trouble getting base hits, lying the ball at the shortstop. Amaro took it on the half off. Had to hurry to make the play to the second baseman, Tony Tanner, but he got his man there as Taylor was all the way down the line, and the relay to first base was in time to get down for out number two. And now Gene Mock out talking once again to his pitcher, Jim Owens, who's had trouble with his arm. Dallas Green still throwing easily in the bullpen for the Philadelphia Phillies. And now with a runner removed, McKenzie sits down in the bullpen, and Sherman Jones will bat for himself. Four to three game in favor of the Phillies. Two men out in the top of the second. Big Dallas Green joined in the bullpen for the Phillies. And the first pitch to Jones, a left-handed batter, is ball one down to low. Jones, a catcher one time in his early baseball career. A good hitting pitcher. Swing and a foul down in the dirt. Strike one. One ball and one strike. Roger Craig, the starter. 
Jones here in the Philly half of the second will pitch to the pitcher, Jim Owens. Then it will be Tony Taylor, their leadoff man, and Ted Savage. Savage with a two-run home run in the first inning, counting for two of their four. So here comes Jim Owens in the batter's box as we get all set to go in the bottom half of the second. Sherman Jones into the big windup, his first pitch, all strike, a fastball two in the inside corner. Outfield shifted towards the right side against the pitcher. Fastball outside, ball one. One ball, one strike. Back on the screen, strike two. One ball and two strikes. Connie Mack Stadium, one of the oldest ballparks in baseball, and a lot of memories right here. Jim Owens with a foul down in the dirt. So the count remains at one and two. They have some billboards on top of a double deck left field stand. It was always a big blow to hit the ball all the way out of the ballpark. They tell me they can hit him over the billboards now. Bouncing ball down towards the first base side. Hodges coming in, fields it, throws to Jones covering at first base, and they get Jim Owens for out number one. That'll bring up Tony Taylor. Also a new innovation here at the ballpark, a new scoreboard out in right center field. It extends about 30 feet higher than the old one they had here in the ballpark. And this one all electrical, a very good one. thing about this ballpark, Mel Ott never hit a home run in as many as he hit and as great as he was. Of course, he played many of his games in Baker Bowl. Now Tony Taylor, an attempt at the bunted foul back in the screen, strike one. And a throw back to Jones is thrown away by the umpire, Chris Pellacudis, and Jocko Kahneman gets Mary Chase after the ball. Jocko was quite a ball player in the major league. Still moves pretty good, doesn't he, Nancy? Yes, he does, and he moves often, too. Jocko likes to keep moving around out there. One strike count on Tony Taylor. He walked in the first inning, so his average still the same at 229. Next pitch is inside, a ball. One ball, one strike. Four to three game, Philadelphia. Jones back, a lineup. up and two down here in the bottom half of the second inning with the Fells leading four to three and the batter is Ted Savage and Ted had a home run at major first major league home run in the first inning with a man on and he gets a good hand right here right handed batter and he really hit it about 450 feet to center field first pitch by Jones a call strike strike one
Thanks very much, Ralph Kiner. Number one man in the batting order for the New York Mets up there, Jim Hickman. Waiting for the pitch from Orange. That's a swing and a ground ball deep in the hole. Fielded by Amaro. He can't throw. And Hickman is on at first base. And it's scored as a base hit for Jim Hickman. As Ruben Amaro went deep in the hole, knocked it down, and then it rolled a few feet away from him. He had no play, and Hickman... Catcher Clay Dalrymple. This is his third appearance. The third appearance for Green. All in relief. He has pitched a total this season of two and two-thirds innings, in which he gave up no runs on one hit. He walked out and he struck out two, so his earned run average is zero, zero, zero. Dallas Green pitched only two and two-thirds innings previously. On in relief now of Jim Owens. Two innings and has faced two batters here in the third. So right now, while Dallas Green is warming up, in order to allow our stations to identify themselves, we pause now for station identification. This is your New York Met station in Schenectady. WGY 810 on your dial. Station for music and sports. The temperature 71 degrees. This is Lindsey Nelson with Ralph Kiner and Bob Murphy here at County Mac Stadium in Philadelphia where the New York Mets are meeting the Philadelphia Phillies in the first game of a four-game series. It'll be a single game tomorrow afternoon. We'll be on there at 1.30, game time 1.35, and then a doubleheader on Sunday. A twin mill on Sunday right here at County Mac Stadium. Dallas Green has completed his warm-ups now. Situation, nobody out. Felix Mantilla, the base runner at first. Jim Hickman, the base runner at third for the Mets. Charlie Neal is the batter, batting number three in the batting order. Grounded out second to first in the first inning. But run is long, first and second on a hit and run. He took the ball to the right side. Here's a swing and a drive going out into center field. Savage over. Houston gets the tag up at third and coming on after the catch is Jim Hickman and the score is tied. A great catch by Savage out in center field. Got as close as he could get to the left. His feet diving, pulled it up. For the out, but Hickman tagged up and scored easily as the relay came out into second base. There was no advance by Mantia, so the score is tied 4-4. On the line drive into center field, scored as a sacrifice for Charlie Neal and give him a run batted in. So Jim Hickman has two hits and has scored twice tonight. Score tied here. The Phillies four and the Mets four, and Frank Thomas is at the plate. He had a home run in the first inning. Number eight this season for him to put him in a tie for the Major League lead. Swing and a miss. Now it's took a healthy cut at that. Dallas Green, a big right-hander, working for the Philadelphia Phillies. Pitch it outside. One ball and one strike to Frank Thomas. He reaches out and gets a handful of dirt. Now moves back into batting position. Thomas right up there on that plate. In his favorite stand. His pitch, he checked it that time. Took it low for ball two. It's two and one. The umpire behind the plate is Chris Pelicudis. Frank Walsh is at first base, Jocko Conlon's at second, and Ken Burkhardt around at third. Frank Torrey holding Mantia on at first base. That pitch is low and away. It's out to three and one now on Frank Thomas with Gil Hodges in the on-deck circle. The New York Mets and the Philadelphia Phillies. takes his lead at first base. Here's the pitch. Thomas, he's running. Hit and run. The pitch is low. The throw through the second base. Taylor has it. And he walking as the pitch was outside. So there are runners at first and second. Had him running out three and one. And Dalrymple fired on through. But the call at the plate was low, and so Thomas goes to first. Here's a pitch. 
Mr. Hodges way inside. Moved it back. Played out for the catcher. Had to stab it. So the count to Hodges is one and one. As he is looking down to Solly Hemus, the coach at third. For the New York Mets. Mantee is the base runner at second. Frank Thomas, the base runner at first. One man out. Green is into the stretch position. Here's the pitch. It's out. It's in there for a call strike. In there for a call strike. To Gil Hodges. One ball and two strikes to count now. And Gus Bell is in the on-deck circle for the Mets. Philadelphia Phillies started the night with a record of nine victories and nine losses in National League play this season. Percentage of an even 500. That pitch misses low. The New York Mets started the night with a record of three victories and 14 losses. Two of those three victories over the Philadelphia Phillies. I did now stepping back in with a count of two balls and two strikes. Runners at first and third. 
Here's the pitch to Gus Bell. Taken high for ball two. It's two or nothing. Defensively, the Phillies have Frank Torrey at first base, Tony Taylor at second, Ruben Amaro at short, and Don Demeter at third. Wes Covington is in left field, Ted Savage is in center, and Johnny Callison is in right. Late Al Rumble is the catcher, and Dallas Green is now the pitcher. Jim Owens was the starter. Ball misses outside, it's ball three, three and oh, and out, he got foul. on Charlie Neal's sacrifice fly was charged, of course, against uh, Jim Owens since he put him on base. So all four runs are charged against Owens. He takes it high and walks, and the bases are loaded. Gus Bell goes down to first base. That is the second walk given up by Dallas Green and brings up catcher Sammy Taylor. Taylor walked in the second inning off Jim Owens. He's a left-hand batter. Came to the New York Mets from the Chicago Cubs. Originally was signed by the Milwaukee Braves as a bonus player. He is from Woodruff, South Carolina. So with two men out, Dallas Green is in a bases loaded situation here. Into the windup and the pitch. Take it in there for a call strike one. Straight away and with a windup. Base is loaded. And here at third. Thomas at second. Bell at first. Jim Green is into the windup. And the pitch to Taylor. He is taken outside for ball one. It's 1 1. That first base. It's 
Covington. Here's at the plate. Here's the pitch to Covington. It's in the dirt. Blocked by Taylor. Keeps it out in front of him. There's no at bat. Herman Jones has two wild pitches in the first inning. On one of them, a run score. Covington walked in the first inning off Roger Craig. It's a throw to first. It is not in time. As Johnny Callison gets back safely. back to the back at first. Gallison was almost all the way down to second. Jim Hickman had come over on the ball himself, but uh, Bell followed it back in the warning track and then came up a few steps to take it on the grass. Finally, one away, no advance. Clay Dow Ruffle is coming up. He's the catcher. He's single driving a run in the first inning. He has been ripping the baseball for the Phillies since the very start of the season. with a batting average of 354. Including two home runs. 12 runs batted in. Pitch is down low, and he's batted in one tonight, so he has 13 runs batted in for the season. The Phillies four and the Mets four in the bottom half of the third inning. Savage hit a 3-1 pitch and the upper deck for a home run. A tremendous wallop, his first major league home run. That gave the Phillies two runs. And John Callison single. West Covington walked, and at that point, Manager Casey single removed Craig and brought Sherman Jones on. Craig, normally a fine control pitcher, was having trouble with his control. Hickman is back there, and he hauls it down for the out. So 
Story has fired out to center, and in the bottom half of the third inning, the Philadelphia Phillies got one run on one hit. There was one error and one man left. And so at the end of three full innings of play, the score is the Philadelphia Phillies five and the New York Mets four. Now let's take a look at scores. First in the National League. The Houston Cold 45s are at Milwaukee tonight. Houston failed to score in the top half of the first inning. Milwaukee is coming to bat now in the bottom of the first. Al Woodishick is going for Houston, and Bob Henley is going for Milwaukee. In Pittsburgh, uh, it's the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Los Angeles Dodgers. They have completed three and one half innings of play, and the Pittsburgh Pirates are leading by a score of two to nothing. They got those two in the bottom half of the first inning. John Padres is pitching for Los Angeles, and Bob Friend is pitching for Pittsburgh. This afternoon, San Francisco Giants defeated the Chicago Cubs 11 to 6. For San Francisco, 11 runs on 14 hits and no errors. For Chicago, 6 runs on 12 hits and 1 error. Billy Pierce was the winning pitcher. Dick Ellsworth was the loser. Orlando Cepeda homered in the second with nobody on for the Giants. He has eighth home run of the season. And Williams homered in the first with nobody on for the Cubs. Tonight in Cincinnati, at the end of two innings, the Reds lead the Cardinals 1 to nothing. Larry Jackson for the Cards. Jim O2 for Cincinnati. Robinson homered in the second with nobody on for the Cincinnati Reds to account for their one run. That's the way things are going in the National. We'll check the American in a moment. Right now, Don Zimmer is stepping into the batter's box for the New York Mets in the top half of the fourth as the Mets trail by one run. Dallas Green, a big right-hander, is the pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. He's under the windup, and the pitch to Don Zimmer is tight, rocks him back, and it's ball one. Zimmer has had a hard time at the plate since the start of the season. Was held out for a few games and was put back into the batting order tonight. He hit into a double play on a hit and run in the second inning. Hard smash, but right at the shortstop. Here's one right at Dallas Green. He knocks it down, picks it up, plays over the first in time, and he's out. Well, Zimmer has hit the ball well uh, on two occasions. Once at the shortstop and once right there back at Dallas Green, who knocked it down, then picked it up and made the play. One away and pitcher Sherman Jones. Do up here now. He's been up one time and he grounded out short the first. He's a left-hand batter. In the American League this afternoon, the Minnesota Twins defeated the Detroit Tigers 4-2. to two. As Bonikowski was the winner and Klein was the loser. Tonight in Boston at the end of three and a half innings, the Chicago White Sox 4 and the Boston Red Sox nothing. Ray Herbert for Chicago. Don Schwartz started for Boston. And Fornelis had a home run. Uh, well, the Fornelis relieved him in the fourth inning. Camilo Carrion homered for the White Sox in the fourth inning with two men on to account for those three runs. Baltimore is at Los Angeles tonight. Here's a pitch to Jones down low for a ball. No score, of course, on the game yet on the coast. And Cleveland is at Kansas City. No score yet on that one. So that's the way things are going elsewhere in the major leagues. As right here, the Phillies lead the Mets by a score of 5-4. to four. Sherman Jones is at the plate. Dallas Green's pitch is swung on and fouled off. One and one to count. Clay Dalrymple. As it now is into the windup. And here's the pitch to Jones. Swung on. And a looper is going out into left field, dropping in for a base hit. Opposite field base hit for Sherman Jones. Up with it is Covington. Fires it back in. Turning and holding it first. He's Sherman Jones with a single to left. And that is the first hit that the Mets have off Dallas Green since he relieved Jim Owens in the third inning. Coming up now is Jim Hickman, the Rangy center fielder, 24 years old, from Henning, Tennessee. Played with Portman last year. The property is then of the St. Louis Cardinals. He has been up twice tonight. He has two hits and he has scored two runs. Sherman Jones takes his lead at first. Here's the pitch. It's in there for a call strike to Jim Hickman. Jones not using a jacket. Doesn't need one here tonight. Extremely pleasant night for baseball. County Mac Stadium in Philadelphia. Like two. As Pickman took his cut that time. He steps back out of the batter's box now. Uh, goes through a small routine of calisthenics. And comes back in. He has a strike two count. There's one man out. Have the potential tying run on his first base. Sidearm 
and it rolls. It is one and two. Mets and the Phillies play here tomorrow afternoon in a single game and a big doubleheader on Sunday. One ball and two strikes. The count to Jim Hickman at the plate. Here's the pitch. Taken outside for ball two. It's two and two now. takes his lead at first. As Dallas Green has the sign now, checks and deals. And to check swing ground ball, he's shortstop. Amaro up with it, plays over to second to Tony Bailey for the force. No play on Hickman as he has forced. Sherman Jones at second. It was a check swing slow roller to shortstop Ruben Amaro. Came over, fielded it, made the toss to Tony Bailey. There was no relay to first. As Hickman has forced Jones. Two men out, runner at first, and now Felix Mantia is at the plate. Mantia is two for two tonight, and he has scored one run himself. Manager Casey single tonight. Drew Mantia over the short, put Zimmer back at third, and took Elio Chacon out of the lineup. Swing and a miss by Mantia at the plate. It's strike one.
the first in time, and he's out. Nice play by Zip at third base. He took a bad hop just as he got to him, and he gloved it with one hand and then fired on over to first base to Gil Hodges in time. So Ruben Amaro has grounded out third to first. There is one away, and pitcher Dallas Green is coming up.
bounced off the rubber. Gil Hodges, the first baseman. Had Tony Taylor, the base runner, at first, moving back toward the bag. Swinging a foul ball off the bat of Savage. It's one and one now. One ball and one strike. Savage had a tremendous spring during the exhibition season.
end of one inning of play, the Milwaukee Braves lead the Houston Colts 45-4 to nothing. Milwaukee got four runs in the bottom half of the first inning. Woody Schick started for Houston, but Bob Bruce relieved him in the first inning. Bob Henley is going for Milwaukee. The end of four innings of play in Pittsburgh. It's the Pirates two, the Los Angeles Dodgers nothing. Padres against Bob Friend. This afternoon, the San Francisco Giants kept right on rolling, defeating the Chicago Cubs 11 to 6. Billy Pierce the winner, Dick Ellsworth the loser. Orlando Cepeda hit his eighth homer of the season, and the second with nobody on, William Tomic, for the Chicago Cubs. Tonight in Cincinnati, at the end of three innings, it's the Cincinnati Reds 2 and the St. Louis Cardinals nothing. Larry Jackson against Jim O2. Robinson and Cardinals have homered for the Cincinnati Reds. In the American League, the Minnesota Twins defeated the Detroit Tigers 4 to 2 this afternoon. Bonikowski the winner and Klein the loser. Tonight in Boston, at the end of four and a half innings of play, the Chicago White Sox 4, the Boston Red Sox nothing. Herbert for Chicago, Schwal started for Boston, Fornelius in the fourth, carry on homered in the fourth with two on. Baltimore's on the coast tonight against the Los Angeles Angels, no score there. Cleveland is in Kansas, now Charlie Neal is at the plate to lead off of the Mets in the top half of the fifth inning. Right hand batter, nothing but one officially tonight. Dallas Green lines and fires has a fly ball to right field. John Callison comes in, takes it for the out. Charlie Neal hopped on the first ball pitch by right hand to Dallas Green. Slide out to right, one away, and Frank Thomas is coming up. He had a home run, a big three run homer in the top half of the first inning. His eighth homer of the season to put him into a tie for the major league lead in the home department. He walked in the third, he's one for one officially tonight.
time of year when everybody's trying to guess who will win the National League flag, and it seems like nobody ever agrees. People pick different teams for different reasons. But when it comes to selecting New York's favorite beer, well, millions agree. It's Rheingold Extra Dry. And the reason? Because Rheingold has a flavor all its own, and dry tells you why. Two little words, Extra Dry, tell you that Rheingold is brewed the long, slow, costlier way for a taste that's crisp and bright and clean, clear through. Brewed Extra Dry to be extra refreshing. So why don't you stock in and buy a refreshing Rheingold and enjoy a glass along with the game. Soon you'll find yourself joining the millions who say, My beer is Rheingold, the dry beer. Two balls and one strike. First up, Felix Manti. 
out now to bat for the pitcher Sherman Jones. Roseblack did a good job in five innings. He allowed one run, gave up just three hits. He walked one. Struck out two, and they were two big ones in the fourth inning with two on when he got Savage and Callison. Ed Boucher batting against right-hander Dallas Green with Don Zimmer on six. Pitch on the way, a foul ball. No play. Mantilla 
is off of it. It's outside. One ball and two strikes. They have had four pitchers in the ball game at Fenway Park in the last half of the fifth inning. The White Sox have used four. Herbert, Peter, Zanny, and now Eddie Fisher. Jim Hickman grabs his lead off first base. Frank Torrey holds against him. The infield is sliding a bit toward left. Pitch to Mantilla. The runner goes. The pitch outside. The peg to flag. Save. Stolen base. Jim Hickman sliding in the stolen base. Throw back. Play down. Rimble was on the second base side of the bag. And it wasn't close. And Hickman set himself up in scoring position. Now the tie-breaking run is in scoring position as Jim Hickman steals second. And the count 2-2 on Felix Mantilla. Five runs on eight hits and one error. The Phillies five runs, five hits and one error. Each team charged with one miscue in the field, and each miscue led to one run. Right here, the Mets are hoping that the Philly miscue will lead to more than one. Now Mantilla asks for time and steps out as Dallas Green takes too long in looking in. Green, a six foot five inch right hander from Newport, Delaware. Looks at the runner, then pitches, swing, and a miss. He struck him out. He got him with a side arm fastball. And that's tie up the game in the sixth inning. One run, one hit, one error, one left eye. And now at the end of five and a half innings, the score the New York Mets five and the Philadelphia Phillies five. They ask any manager in the league, and he's sure to agree. The true test of a good hitter is his batting average against second string pitching. No, sir, it's how well he does against the ace pitchers around the league. And top flight competition is the true test of a cigarette, too. And that's why we say, smoke all seven leading filter cigarettes. You'll find some taste too strong, they might as well not have a filter at all. And others taste too light. They take all the man-sized flavor out of smoking. I'll bet dollars to donuts, your taste will tell you. Viceroy bets 1,000 against all comers. Because Viceroy's got the taste that's right. If your filter cigarette is tasting too strong, don't you sometimes wonder if your brand is wrong? Well, Viceroy tastes the way it'd like a filter cigarette to taste. Not too strong. Not too light. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. That's right. That's right. WGY 810 on your dial. Bob Murphy with Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Kiner from County Max Stadium. And the Phillies have their first baseman, Frank Torrey, as the first hitter up against Ken McKenzie. Ken, the Canadian born left hander who was given a bonus to sign by the Milwaukee organization. Busiest relief pitcher among the Met hurlers. The left-hander winds and pitches, strike one call. This is the eighth outing for Ken McKenzie. Four of his last five times out, McKenzie has pitched very well. He comes into a tie ball game right now, it's just a win or lose. And the pitcher on the way, a drive in the air to right center field, hit hard for a base hit. Taken on a hop by Jim Hickman and Corey swings, he's on with a long single. Take 
comes over to cover the throw in pass. And they bunt Frank Torrey along to second base. Now the pitcher, Dallas Green, is scheduled up. Nothing going in the bullpen for the Philadelphia Phil. Day game 
game tomorrow and a doubleheader Sunday. Then three single games out in Chicago with the Cubs on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And we'll all be back in New York at the Polo Grounds on next Friday night. Bernie Tebbets and the Milwaukee Braves coming in. See where Hank Aaron really broke out of his batting slump in a big way in the game yesterday here against the Phillies. He had two home runs, a double, and a triple. Four hits in the game. And despite that, the Phillies won the ball game. Tony Taylor pitches. Foul down the right field line. Toward the season out of play. So the individual duel between left-hander Ken McKenzie and second baseman Tony Taylor continues on in this tag game in the last half of the sixth inning. Relieved that Johnny Padres in the fifth. 
an afternoon game. The Giants won their tenth in a row. They're now 19 and five on the year. Billy Pierce, the winner, relieved by Larson Cepeda, hit his eighth homer. The final score: Giants 11 and the Cubs six. At the end of five, Cincinnati three, the Cardinals nothing. O'Toole against Jackson. Three bases empty, home runs for the Reds by Frank Robinson, Leo Cardenas, and Beta Benson. In the American League, in a day game, rookie Rich Rollins homer to the ninth, one on. Minnesota down, Detroit four to two. Bonacowski, the winner in relief, land the loser. At the end of three, uh, four and a half, the White Sox lead the Red Sox four to nothing. But the White Sox have had five pitchers in there in the last half of the fifth inning. and to pour yourself a tall, cold glass of Rangel. Rangel is beer as beer should taste. Dry tells you why. Charlie Neal leading off of the seventh inning against Dallas Green. Waxes his foul back into the upper deck and out of play.
balls, one strike on Gil Hodgson. Delivers, and it's a ground ball, hopes to show. 
shortstop. Mantilla takes it out of the dirt. Takes the hot just as bad as that. Good one, two, three inning for Ken McKenzie, and the Phillies are out of there with no runs, no hits, no errors, none left on. And so at the end of seven, the score at Johnny Mac Stadium, the Phillies six, and the New York Mets five. The Mets will be back at the polo grounds on Friday night, one week from tonight, May 11th. They'll be opening a four-game weekend series against the Milwaukee Braves. Hank Aaron has been mired in a tough batting slump, but he broke out of that slump in a tremendous way. The game against the Phillies right here in Philadelphia yesterday. He had two home runs, a triple, and a double, and yet the Phillies won the ball game. But Eddie Matthews, Hank Aaron, Joe Adcock, Warren Spahn, all the members of the star-studded cast of the Milwaukee Braves will be coming into New York for a four-game weekend series Friday night, a big doubleheader on Saturday, single game on Sunday, May 13th. You know, Ralph, uh, Sunday, May 13th, the week from this Sunday will be Mother's Day, and I think it'd be a wonderful idea on Mother's Day if uh, the whole family can kind of get together and take Mom out to brunch around 7.30 or 12, and come right on out to the polo grounds for that Sunday afternoon game between the Mets and Braves. Well, every day should be Mother's Day, I think, Bob, but that would certainly be a wonderful way to celebrate and get out and see some nice baseball and the fresh air and see... That Milwaukee club is really loaded with talent, aren't they? And Hank Aaron, all he had was two home runs, a double, and a triplet breaking out of that slump yesterday. He broke out of it for good. He had a great day. Well, we're moving to the top of the eighth inning. The ball game 6-5 to five in favor of Philadelphia. And coming up now against Dallas Green, for the New York Mets, Sammy Taylor. Sammy Taylor, 0 for 2 today. He walked along with two ground outs. Batting for the left-hand side. Green throws a fastball. It's foul tip, strike one. Well, Dallas Green came on in the ball game after two men were on in the third inning and no one out. And he's done a fine job in relief with Jim Owen. He's the man on record right now as far as the win and loss is concerned. Still he's out in front by one while he was pitching. That would certainly be a wonderful way to celebrate and get out and see some nice baseball and the fresh air and see, hey, that Milwaukee club is really loaded with talent, aren't they? And Hank Aaron, all he had was two home runs, a double and a triple that's breaking out of that slump yesterday. He broke out of it for good. He had a great day. Well, we're moving to the top of the eighth inning. The ball game 6-5 to five in favor of Philadelphia. And coming up now against Dallas Green, the New York Mets, Sammy Taylor. Taylor, 0 for 2 today. He walked along with two ground outs. Batting for the left-hand side. Green throws a fastball. It's foul tip, strike one. Well, Dallas Green came on in the ball game after two men were on in the third inning and no one out. And he's done a fine job in relief with Jim Owen. He's the man on record right now as far as the win and loss is concerned. But he's out in front by one while he was pitching. Next pitch is down low. Ball one. One ball, one strike. Ball two as he misses again. Two balls and one strike to Sammy Taylor, who's leading off here in the top of the eighth inning. Mets trail by one. They'll send up Sammy Taylor, Don Zimmer. They will send up a pinch hitter, possibly, as their third man. Ball three. And this time, Dallas Green misses inside. Three balls and one strike. Two right-handers in the bullpen for the New York Mets. Dave Hillman and Bob Miller. Now the 3-1 pitch to Sammy Taylor. Hit hard on the ground to the first baseman off his chest. Boy, he picks it up. Goes the pitch is covering his down. with a two-base hit off of the third baseman. And he is one for three here today. He later scored, and that was the time run until the Phillies went out in front in the bottom half of the six to make it six to five. Big hard swing by Zimmer, strike one. It's been a seesaw game all the way. The Mets out in front with three runs in the top of the first. The Phillies then took over the lead, four to three, when they scored four. 
there. The Mets tied it up in the top of the third. The Phillies went out in front of the bottom of the third by a score of five to four. High fly ball. It's the center field. This is Chase Savage back, but he is there. Now under the ball, he makes the catch. Two men out now. And we'll see if manager Casey Singel is going to pitch in. Jim Marshall coming out of the dugout into the on-deck circle, picking up the rosin, so we'll have a new pitcher in the ball game, and Jim Marshall bats for the pitcher, Ken McKenzie. Jim Marshall, a long ball hitter in the batter's box. He's a left-handed batter. And Jim brings in a 345 record. He has hit three home runs on the season. Bat only 29 times to now, so he's averaged better than a home run every 10 times up. Pace, if it could be kept up, which would lead you to about 50 home runs a year. Of course, the secret is to keep it up. Jim Marshall set to go against Dallas Green. Two men out to score six to five Philadelphia. And there's a drive to center field. This will chase Savage back, but not far enough as he gets to it. Jackson for the New York Mets. 
Jackson pitched an eight-hit shutout against Philadelphia in the fourth round for his one victory. Curveball, one on a miss, strike two. Demeter completely fooled on the pitch, one ball and two strikes. Now warming up for the New York Mets alongside of Miller, Jay Hook. Jay just warming up for a possible start on Sunday, though. Wolford up and plays to Miller in the bullpen for New York. Pitch outside, ball two. Two balls and two strikes as Hillman misses with a change of pace. Manager Casey Single indicated that Bob Moore hit might possibly start one of the games of the four-game series. There's a smash down to third. Zimmer up for the ball, throws across in time. Fine play by Don Zimmer as the force of the ball after he got it, carried him into foul territory at the deep third base position. A long throw, a good one to Gil Hodges, and Demeter is out. And it brings up Frank Joy. Joy singled in the sixth inning, and his single led to the go-ahead run short by the Phillies as he scored when Tony Taylor looped the thing on the left field. And put the Phillies out in front, 6-5. to five. He's a left-handed batter. One for three in the night. First pitch by Hellman. A call strike. A breaking ball down around the knee. Strike one. Dory flied out to deep right field. And Gus Bell made a fine catch in the ball in the first inning. Then he lined out the center. So he hit the ball well all night long. Brother with a no walkie ball club who's a catcher. There's a bunt down a third base line. And it's a safe player. He's got a base hit. Zimmer doesn't even make a play in the ball. A safe player. A base hit for Zoy. Well, Frank Joy, seeing Zimmer in a deep position at third base, laid down a perfect bunt. There was nobody in the world who could have thrown him out, and he picked up his second hit of the game. Ball rolled right near the line. All Picked up by Zimmer right at third base. No joy at first base with one out of Ruben Amaro, the batter. He throws his bat at the ball, pops it in the shallow right field. Bell coming on, makes the catch, the throw to first base in time, a double play. Frank Dory thinking the ball might drop in, got too far down the line and couldn't get back. Bell made the catch, it's a double play. And that retires his side. In the inning for the Philadelphia Phillies, no runs on one hit, no errors, no one left in the score. At the end of eight innings of play, the Philadelphia Phillies six, the New York Mets five. Well, now let's check the scores in the other games in the Major League. In the National League, at the end of four and one and a half innings, it's all tied up four to four. Houston and Milwaukee. What a check to Stutter, now out, Bruce is in. Henley going for Milwaukee. Home run by Hal Smith in the fifth with one on, scoring two runs for Houston. In a night game in Pittsburgh, Los Angeles in Pittsburgh, the Pirates have a 4 nothing lead at the end of seven. Bob Friend is out of the game. He was a starter. Olivo is in now. Padre started for the Dodgers. He is out. Roebuck is in. In an afternoon game, San Francisco won their tenth straight game as they defeated the Cubs 11-6. Harris was a winning pitcher for San Francisco. Ellsworth was the loser. Cepeda hit his eighth home run of the season. That's batting for the Major League lead in the second with no one on. Williams had one in the first with no one on for Chicago. In a night game, St. Louis and Cincinnati. Cincinnati out in front, three to nothing at the end of six and a half. O'Toole going for the Reds. Jackson started for the Cardinals. So Rusty is now in the game in the sixth inning. A home run by Robinson in the second with no one on. Cardinals in the third with no one on. And Pinson in the fourth with no one on. And now as we go to the top of the ninth inning, here is Bob Murphy to give you the play-by-play. -play. He'll also fill you in on the American League scores as we move along. Thank you very kindly, Ralph. Jim Hickman starts off the New York Met Hopes now here in the ninth inning as he faces right-hander Dallas Green. Green, the tall right-hander, pitches bounce foul of the count strike one. We're in the ninth. New York trailing by one six to five in what has been an exciting ball game all the way. 
American League, Minnesota beat Detroit 4 to 2 in a day game. Red Sox lead Chicago 12 to 5 after 5 and a half. Kansas City got 5 in the second inning against Cleveland. They lead 5 to nothing over Cleveland after 2. Fast ball inside. One ball and one strike on Jim Hickman. Jim has two hits and four times up. He singled in the first inning tonight, later scored, and singled in the third and later scored. Jim has good power, and he's a bull hitter. They play him around toward left. Dallas Green winds and pitches. A drive hit hard toward short of base and beyond the reach of Ruben Amaro. Hickman around first, and the tying run is on. Nobody out on the ninth inning. Jim Hickman collecting his third hit of the game. And now the tying run is on in the ninth.
Hogan and Sally Hemus wants to talk to Jim Hickman, the runner on second. For Felix Mantilla, his third hit of the game, a Texas Laker in the short left field. Back at 
fielding depth at first. Demeter even with the bag at third. Now the pitch. The runners go. The pitch is ball four at the base of the loader. Cigarette. 
Play the percentages, my friend, and you're sure to come up with Viceroy. Prove it for yourself. Smoke all seven leading filter cigarettes and be out of the ball down. Now bet you'll find some taste too strong, some taste too light. But Viceroy's got the taste that's right. That's right, fans. Better cheese to Viceroy. And now for the wrap-up on tonight's game, let's swing over to Ralph Kiner. Well, it was a ball game that was wrapped up, actually, in the first and ninth inning. In the first inning, the Mets got out in front with three runs. The Phillies scored four to take over, and from there on, it's seaside back and forth. The ninth inning, a very exciting one. The New York Mets trailing by one run, loaded the bases with no one out. But, fortunately for Dallas Green, who pitched seven fine innings, giving up only one run, that run unearned, he got out the big man, Frank Thomas, who previously had a home run and a single, and then he got Gil Hodges to hit a hard ground ball into a double play, and that ended the ball game. The winning run in the ball game was scored in the sixth inning by the Philadelphia Phillies when Frank Jory singled to center field. He was sacrificed to second base, where he later scored when Tony Taylor drove in the winning run with a single to left field. Roger Craig started the ball game for the New York Mets. He worked actually officially to nobody. He got no one out, but he was charged with four runs, giving up two hits. He pitched a total of four batters. Sherman Jones then came on, and he worked five innings, giving up one run on three hits. Then it was Ken McKenzie, pitcher number three, who worked two innings, and he gave up one run on two hits. Dave Hellman finished out, working one inning, allowing only one base hit, scoring no runs off of him. A home run by Frank Thomas in the first, a big blow for the New York Mets. That was his eighth of the season, and he drove in three runs with it that gave him a total of 14 RBIs. Another run driven in by Charlie Neal. He has 10, and that was on the sacrifice fly to center field. For the Philadelphia Phillies, Ted Savage had a home run, his first major league home run in the first inning off of Roger Craig, and he drove in two runs as there was a man on base. And that just about does it for the ball game today. Tomorrow, McClish will schedule his schedule to go against the New York Mets in a day game starting at 1.30. He'll be opposed by Al Jackson if the starting pitches that are picked by the managers of the respective clubs go through. So another ball game tomorrow, a doubleheader on Sunday, and that's just about it for baseball here. And that wraps up another New York Mets game. We certainly hope you enjoyed it. Roy certainly enjoyed bringing it your way. Looking at our schedule once again, we see the Mets will face the Philadelphia Phillies here at Connie Mack Stadium at 1.30 tomorrow afternoon. We